in this lesson we will discuss about directional overcurrent relays and how to implement these directional overcurrent relays in etap so directional overcurrent relays are necessary if we are providing protection coordination by means of the direction of the fault current so the direction of the fault current has to be taken into consideration for the protection coordination so i have the single line diagram on the screen right now and over here i have made a simple substation i have left out all the detailing and for this example we will just use this portion as a substation and we have two sources we have the generator 1 and the generator 2 which is connected as feeders to this bus number 4 over here so when i will run the load flow okay according to the load flow both the sources are feeding to the bus over here and when a fault occurs on any of these lines say a fault occurs at this point which is the midpoint between these two lines over here so what happens is that this generator will feed to the fault through this portion over here whereas the other generator will feed to the fault where the fault current will go through this line through the bus and to the fault over here so when a fault occurs at this point i will show you the simulation so what happens is that this operates and this operates as well so we only need to isolate this portion over here but what happens is that both our feeders are being isolated so this is an unwanted condition so what we can do here is to provide a directional overcurrent relay so the direction of the relay will be such that when the current flows from the bus to the line then only we need to operate this circuit breaker as you can see in this case that the current is flowing into the bus and here we can see that the fault current is going out of the bus so let us see how we can implement the directional relay over here so double clicking on the relay I am going to the overcurrent page over here. I have used Alstom P139. So I have this directional element already available in this relay. So I am going to tick on this portion over here. And when I click on the number 67, so the number 67 is the device number for the directional relay. And the direction is forward. I will explain this in a minute and the maximum torque angle or the MTA is 45 degree lead. So the MTA that we can provide or the maximum torque angle we can provide to a relay is in the range of 30 to 60 degrees. So in most relays you have the option of selecting 30, 45 or 60. This actually depends upon the line impedance and you can see the polarizing. We can choose the polarizing voltage. I'm going to click this on OK and when I mentioned the direction I am referring to this over here this dot portion over here when the current flows into the dot we say that the direction is forward and when the current is flowing into the non dotted portion over here we say that the current or we say that it is in the reverse direction so protection engineers have a convention such that the device to be protected should be put such that the CT's dotted portion should be away from this or the non-dotted portion should be towards the device to be protected. So the dotted portion is what we refer to as the P1 portion or the P1 terminal of so this is done in order to avoid confusion between the forward and the reverse directions so i can either put in the reverse direction you can see that the current when flowing into the non dot portion over here 
then if we want to provide protection to this region or when we want to look into this direction we need to put the relay into reverse or i can simply reverse the polarity of this relay so let us stick to the conventions and i am going to reverse the polarity of these two and i'm going to turn on the directions for these two as well so now let us see how we can discriminate between these two faults i'm going to fault at this point over here and you can see that this circuit breaker has operated and only this circuit breaker has operated because now the current is flowing away from the bus and you can see when this portion is isolated we can use the other source in order to feed this load and let me show on the other line as well you can see that this circuit breaker has only operated and the other has not operated so this is how you can implement directional overcurrent relays in etap and i will see you in the next lesson